All right, so this is pre a AP Calculus AB, Unit 2, Lesson 3. We're looking at the topic of exponential functions. Uh, there's a relationship between linear functions and, and, and exponential functions that I want to point out. Let's say we have this rule here. I start, I start at uh, the value 5, and I repeatedly add 2 right so that rule will generate this this series it'll generate 5 7 9 11 13 15 and so on okay we can generalize this to this formula here we can generalize this to the start value 5 plus plus n minus 1 times the increase value, the, the amount that we increase every time, okay? And this, this is a well-known function here. So uh, if I change n to x, we, we end up with this equation. We end up with y equals, y equals uh, 2x, not plus 5, because if x, well, if, if we let x be 0, actually, Let's 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 start n at zero. Then then five becomes the the uh, start value, right? So if if the number of the term starts at zero, one, two, three, four, five, then this becomes this becomes uh, uh, five plus two times zero. And this becomes five plus two times 1, 5 plus 2 times 2, and so on, okay? This is a well-known pattern. It's linear growth, right? Linear growth. And we are, we're quite familiar with this, the point, the slope-intercept form of a line, y equals 2x plus 5, where 2 is the rate of change, 5 is the start value or the y-intercept, okay? So let me change the rules a little bit. Now I'm going to start with start at 5. And I'm going to multiply repeatedly, not add. Multiply. So I'm going to multiply too. So imagine what happens. And again, we're going to let uh, let n n be zero. We're going to start n at zero, or start. I'm just going to yeah yeah and start n at zero. Okay. We're going to multiply by two. So the the x value or the y value, the output value is the output value is five, right? And we're going to repeatedly multiply by two. For the first term, 10. For the second term, 20. For the third term, 40. For the fourth term, 80. For the fifth term, we're going to go 160, okay? And so let's kind of generate what this is talking, what this is doing. This is five, right? And this is five times two. And this is five times two times two. And this is 5 times 2 times 2 times 2, because each one is 2 times the previous one. 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 5 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. The, the pattern becomes more evident when I, when I expand this or, or reduce this using exponents. This is simply 5 times 2. This is, and I'll, go, I'll come back to that one. This is 5 times 2 to the second. 5 times 2 to the 3rd, 5 times 2 to the 4th, 5 times 2 to the 5th. Going backwards, this is 5 times 2 to the 1, and this is 5 times 2 to the 0, and any, anything to the 0 power is 1, right? So we have a general rule. This is 5 times 2 to the power of n, right? Note what 5 was. 5 was the start value. And 2 is the multiplier. We call it the, ra the ratio between terms, right? Every term divided by the previous term is 2. 160 divided by 80 is 2. 80 divided by 40 is 2. 40 divided by 20 is 2. 20 divided by 10 is 2, and so on. Okay, so that leads us to the general formula. And this is the way it's presented in your lesson. Y equals, y equals k x to the n. Okay, and it's important to note that k is the start value, 
It's also called the y-intercept. Okay, and actually not x to the n, not x to the n, a to the x, a to the x, okay, a to the x, okay, and a, a is the common ratio or multiplier, and x can be discrete in the case of n, but x is continuous, n is, n is discrete, okay, we talked about this in a previous lesson, discrete and x is continuous. Okay, and let's uh, analyze it a little bit in uh, Desmos here. Desmos, not Desleaf, okay. So here we go. So we're gonna do uh, y equals, and I'm just gonna put in a number here, two times, and then uh, let's do three to the power of x, okay. And you'll notice our graph, takes off like a ski jump. It's flat on the left here, and as it goes up, as it goes to the right, it gets steeper and steeper and steeper, right? And the pattern is repeated multiplication. You'll notice the y-intercept is two, that's the start value, and the multiplier is three, so two times two to, or, or two times three is six, so it goes through six over here, one, six. And then six times three is 18, so I'll go over one more, go up 18, all right? And three times 18 is 30, 40, 54, and I'd go up to 54 on the next one, and so on and so forth. And you can imagine that it, it grows very very rapidly. All right, let's play with these values here. So as I increase this number, the graph gets steeper, right? Actually, it doesn't get steeper. It changes the, the start value, right? As this number gets bigger, it gets steeper. Notice it's not changing the x and the x-intercept. Okay, let's put in some. Uh, let's use use k for this and a for this. Okay, I'm going to add sliders here. So when k is 1 and a is 1, it's kind of uninteresting. It's basically y equals 1, a whole flat line here. And as k goes up and down, the x-intercept goes, or the y-intercept goes up and down. But as a gets bigger, it gets steeper and steeper. Now what happens when a gets less than 1 is really kind of interesting here. When it gets less than 1, it actually slopes down because you recall a to a, a, a power of a fraction that's less than 1 actually is a division problem, right? So think of it this way. If I say a to the 1 half, a to the 0 0.5, that is, that is the 1 half power or the square root, right? So it is the square root of, of the number. And so each subsequent number is the square root of the number. And so it's going down. And this is repeated division, so it's dividing by 2 over and over and over again. Dividing by 2 over and over and over. So this one, let's, let's put this on 2, right? So this has a height of uh, an x intercept, a y intercept of 2, but if I go over 1, uh, well it's actually, oh, because it's 0 0.4. 0.5. There we go. If we go over 1, we'll notice the value, if I can get it to read exactly, 1, 1. It's gone down by half. And if we go over to the next one, it's half of a half of 1, which is half. And the next one is half of that. Getting half as tall and half as tall as we go along. Okay. All right. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense for A to be negative for one reason, or for, for A to be negative. Because what happens is when you when you square a negative, when you square a negative, you get a positive. When you square a positive, you get a positive. And it doesn't know what to do with the sign. So the the domain, the domain is really important to, to, to note. X must be, must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Or not X. Yes, X, not X. A. A must be greater than or equal to zero. Keep things straight. A must be greater than or equal to zero. So the, the, the multiplier has to be positive. Okay? If A is greater than or equal to zero, but less than one, then that represents decay. 
if a is greater than one or equal to one, of course, that represents uh, a horizontal line, a constant, no change. If a is greater than one, then that represents growth. And those are the big ideas, recognizing when it's decay, when it's growth, okay? All right, so I can do a lot of uh, specific problems, but I'll leave the lesson, uh, that up to the lesson. Uh, there is a little bit of a, a talk about half-life. So if I look up, for example, the half-life of carbon-14. Uh, carbon-14, half-life. Okay, that is a known number, carbon-14, half-life. Uh, half-life of about 5,730 years, right? 5,730 years, plus or minus 40. 5,730 years is the half-life of carbon-14. Okay, so let's say H, 5,730 years. Okay, and the formula for half-life for the half-life is uh, the amount in the uh, the amount which is a function of time is the initial amount we call that a naught or a ought right and the the multiplier the the factor is a half right so it's going to be multiplied by a half every time it's going down it's a decay problem and then the exponent is the number of half-lives so it is the total time divided by the half-life. So if the, it's about 11,000 years, then 11,000 years is two total half-lives for, for carbon-14, and so it would be to the power of two, right? And you're going to answer questions about that. Uh, so for example, uh, there are five grams of carbon-14, all right? And we're going to let it set for 10,000 years. Years, okay, that's time. All right, so we would say, and uh, yeah, so the amount of carbon-14 present in the sample after 10,000 years is five times one half to the power of 10,000 over the half-life, 5,730, right? Really fairly straightforward, and uh, we can punch that in our calculator, or our calcusooner if you're more interested in getting a quick answer. No, there is no calcusooner. It's all just calculator. That's why mathematicians are always late. Five times one-half, because they say calculator, dude, one ten thousand. Oh, I'm going to need a parenthesis here in Desmos. Divided by 5730. All right, and after 10,000 years, 5730. There we go, because that wasn't right. There should be there should be considerably less than half left, because that's more than more than a half life. About 1.5, 1.49 grams. Okay, and so. You'll, you'll uh, be dealing with that in more detail, all right? And then the final formula, and this is a financial formula that is universal. It's well known in all financial circles. You probably have heard of it. If not, no worries, you can learn it now, okay? The amount in an account is equal to the principal times one plus the annual interest rate divided by the number of compounding periods to the power of the compounding periods times time. You recognize this hopefully as an initial, as a comp a is an exponential growth model where p is the initial amount, okay? The multiplier, right, is one plus, so it's gonna be greater than one if r is positive. If the rate is negative, it's gonna be less than one. And compounding periods are, are something that you get used to when you when you deal with banks uh, when you deal with credit cards and savings accounts and checking accounts and so forth they typically have uh, interest rates they charge or or add interest and so let's say we have a bank account where r is four percent and we call it the annual percentage rate apr 
annual percentage rate. And contrast that with APY. It's not APY, annual percentage yield. All right. Note, by the way, R is a 4%, but you've got to use it in the formula as a decimal, 0 0.04. Remember to move that thing two hops. And let's say the compounding period is once a, once a month, so 12. Every month they calculate an, a compound or add in the interest. Uh, most common is monthly, but then you'll also see daily, right? And then rarely you'll see continuously, which we'll deal with here in a moment. All right. And let's say let's say we've got the an amount that we're going to put in an account. Let's let's put ten thousand dollars in the account. Okay. At four percent interest, compounded monthly, and let's leave it for. And T is always in years here. Let's leave it for twenty years. Okay, so our formula becomes ten thousand times one plus the interest rate 0.04 and divided by twelve. And the 0.04 divided by 12, that number actually is also called the periodic interest rate. So the, you get 4% per year, but 4% divided by 12 will give you the monthly interest rate. Okay, to the power of 12 times 20. Okay, and again, use your own graphing calculator. You get familiar, really familiar with your calculator. 1 plus 0.04 divide 12 to the power of, in Desmos I need this parenthesis, 12 times 20. So 22,225.82, 22,225.82, okay, dollars. That is the amount in the account at the end of 20, 20 years, all right? Now, just to compare, let's do the same problem, but let's compound continuously, okay? Compounding continuously uses uh, a, a, a number called E, right? It's called the natural base. And I remember this as shampoo, the shampoo formula, PERT, P-E to the R-T. I don't know if you've seen, there's a shampoo called PERT. PE to the RT, A equals PERT, okay? And in this case, continuously, using the same formula, my formula becomes the principal 10,000 times E to the interest rate 0.04 times time 20, okay? It's a simpler formula. No periodic rate because the periodic rate is dividing by infinity, so it goes off to zero. Okay, Okay. so 10,000 E, and Desmos knows what E is, to the power of 0.04 times 20. Okay, 2255.41, sorry, 2255.41. Point four one, and you'll notice there is a bit of a difference. The continuous uh, compounding yields just a little bit more than the periodic compounding, and generally, the the greater the number of compounding periods, the greater the the amount of the yield. So it goes up with more with more um, more compounding periods, not drastically, but a little bit. All right, that's pretty much a good intro to today's lesson. Take your time. There's a lot of details, a lot of information to, to digest.